Hey, what's up guys? So previously I bought this 43 inch Philips Ambilight TV. It's a 4K UHD TV, which I'll have the model number linked down below in the description. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about the different picture settings that this comes with, a little bit about the Ambilight settings, and of course the different applications that come with this. So in this video, I'm gonna cover a few topics. I'll have them timed and clickable down below in the description as well. So if you wanted to skip to any particular settings, you can do that in this video as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights off and start reviewing some of the different settings and the Ambilight settings and the picture settings for you guys. So hopefully this answers all of the questions you guys have. And if there's any other questions you have for me, then do drop a comment below. So let's just get straight into it. Okay guys, so the first thing I wanted to cover is the responsiveness of actually using the settings no matter what application you want to use. So I find that when I'm using the TV, if I press a button, let's say for example, the settings button, I find that it's a little bit slow when you're trying to navigate through the different items or you're trying to open an app. It's not as smooth as I thought it was going to be. So when I'm pressing right and going to the different settings, I think it takes about one or two seconds before it actually highlights to the next item. So for me, that's not as smooth as some of the more high-end TVs from Samsung or from Sony and that kind of stuff. So this is quite a budget TV and you do get a sort of sense for the budget that you pay for this TV. It relates to the actual quality you get in terms of the responsiveness. So for me, that's not so great. So as I'm pressing right, it is a bit of a delay in actually going through these items. It's a little bit slow for my liking, but nonetheless, if you are gonna get a good Ambilight TV at such a low price, then I guess this is something that you can live with. Secondly, I'm gonna talk about the apps. So if I press the home button on the remote control, you can see a list of applications that come up here. I've reordered them in a specific order. For some reason, the third one in the list is always the default one that you have to select. So I've got that set as YouTube, but then I can navigate through and select whichever one I want, for example, Netflix and so on. So one of the questions I received is if there's any specific types of apps that come in this TV. And I'm going to now show you all of the different apps that come with this by default. So if I go into app gallery, I'm basically going to scroll through all of the different applications that come with this. And if there's any you want to see, then uh, do make this video full screen and just pause the video. So I'm going to scroll down and just show you a list of everything that's in this TV. So these are all the ones and you cannot go and download any other different applications, which I find is a little bit annoying because there's other apps, you know, IPTV and that kind of stuff that I'd like to have on there. But unfortunately you can't get them. I'm not sure if there's a way to specifically search and download new apps because I've tried to find them and this is just a set of defaults. As you can see, this is all of them and none of these ones in this list are ones that I'll probably be using, which is a shame. A lot of these are international apps and some weird weather apps and Spanish ones and games and kids and not the greatest selection. Probably 90, 95% of these you won't be using, which is a bit of a shame. You have categories here, you can select video, you can select entertainment, but again, there's no way you can download more new apps. So that's a bit of a shame from that point of view. Okay, number three, I'm gonna show you a little bit about the picture settings. So if I hit settings and go down here into picture style, so I've got this set as natural. You can actually keep pressing select and it goes into different options that you can see on the actual video. So this is standard, this is movie mode, this is personal, vivid, and natural again. So there's very few options, but depending on the setting that you've got in your environment and the types of lighting you have around you, you might wanna change this. So. I think to get the best colors, most people will have them set to vivid. If you're gonna watch something late night and you've got the lights off, then you might wanna switch it to movie mode, but I'll leave it on vivid for now. Number four, I'm gonna show you a little bit about the Ambilight style option here. So if I hit select on that, it will give you a few options here on the left-hand side, which will give you the different controls of the Ambi lights behind the TV. So I've currently got it set to the default, which is follow video. So whatever colors are on the screen in the video, that's what colors are projected on the wall behind the TV. If you go down to follow audio, now depending on the audio coming from the video that you're playing on the TV, the lights will flicker and it will show those colors on the wall behind you. But as you can see, it's a bit distracting and it could give you a headache for too long. I guess this is something useful if you're playing games, maybe Call of Duty or something like that, it might be useful or if you're playing music videos and you wanna just make it a little bit more like a party scene, then that something might be useful for you. 
follow color is if you wanted to just have it select a single color and just have it set there throughout then uh, that's something you can have as well. Follow flag is something you set up with an app that you download on the app store for iOS or for Android. It's, the, it's called Philips follow flag and that's basically allows you to select different country flags and have that display on the wall. Now I did download this app, but unfortunately it wasn't compatible with my version of Android, but uh, you can set this flag manually from here as well, rather than from your phone. So if I go to, let's say Belgium, you can see it's set to the Belgium colors and you can go and find your own home country. So I live in England, so I will set that there. Now this will stay on continuously. So if you wanted to leave the flag in the background, regardless of what video is playing, then you can do that. If you don't want to use any particular flag, then obviously you can turn this off and go back to using just the follow video. Now, once you do select follow video, you have a few options here to give you the type of lighting that you want to get. So I've set this as vivid, so the colors actually come out quite bright behind the TV. You can set this to different color intensities, depending on the categories here. If you want it more light and not too bright, then you can go to the relax mode. I've just uh, left it on uh, standard by default, and that will be good enough for me. Now this Ambilight Plus Hue option here, you need to download an app for this as well, and you have to connect it to your TV using Wi-Fi to allow you to customize the colors in the background to yourself. So I did try this and it wasn't compatible with my phone. I think the app hasn't been updated for a long time, so it's only compatible with very old phones and very old mobile OS systems. So that was unfortunate. I think none of the Philips apps that I've downloaded have been compatible with my Android. So again, that's a shame. I can't use any of the apps to control the TV. So I'm just bound by using the remote control and the set options that come with it. And I presume the majority of you will have that same experience as well. Next, I'm going into the picture settings. Now here's a few presets that you can select for the picture style. I've set it to vivid so I can get the best coloring options for my videos. You can also manually adjust the color, the contrast, sharpness and brightness, which are very common options that you get in most picture settings. There's also a mode here at the bottom called quick picture setting, which will allow you to cycle through and manually select step by step all the different picture settings you want and gives you a little preview of this. So for example, it starts off with brightness, then it will go into let's say the contrast, and it'll go through all of the different options that I previously mentioned. And finally, all settings. So if I go into here, just to show you what different menu options you get in here, you'll need to exit everything that you're currently watching. Again, you can go back and select from here all the different picture options. You can change the sound options, the Ambulite options as well, and go through all of the network and the Wi-Fi options here. And if you wanted to update to the latest software, this is where you can do it and you can check for new versions through the uh, internet or through a USB stick that you can connect to the back of the TV. So it's very basic. There's uh, not a whole load of options and for the majority of people, if you're only gonna buy a budget TV like this, then the preset options are good enough and it gives you a very good experience. Obviously it's not the fastest and smoothest TV with the quickest options in the menus, but then again, it's good enough to watch all of these mainstream apps that you like. Now the last thing, this is an Ambilight TV and I've received questions before is if there's a possibility to just turn the Ambilights off completely. And yes, you can do that. So if you go into the Ambilight style, where I showed you these options before, if you go into off, you don't need to use the Ambilights at the back of the TV and you can just watch the TV as normal. So those are all of the main options there. Okay, so hopefully that answers a lot of your questions. If there's anything else that I haven't covered that you'd like to know, then do drop a comment below. Otherwise, I know this video is a little bit long, so you can go ahead and skip to a specific section I talked about down below as well. And I'm gonna be reviewing a lot more TVs in the future as well. So if you like watching TV reviews, then uh, do make sure to subscribe. I also do lots of tech and gadget reviews, and I hope you catch those as well. Otherwise, I hope you like this video, and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.